Welcome to video 2.4e, solving a polynomial equation. All right, so this is what it's all about. All that factoring we've done before is to get to this solving. So for right now, for solving polynomials, what we want to do is factor. And if we at least get the factoring down to a quadratic, we're good to go. We can use the quadratic formula, completing a square, uh, factoring, whatever. So our main goal is to always factor, 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 um, set it equal to zero and use the zero product property. All right, uh, so I've got a fifth degree polynomial, the highest degree term is five, which means there will be five solutions. The solutions may be real or non-real, different or the same, okay? So x sub one through x sub five. And our goal is to find all five of those solutions. All right, step one, always, always, always go into standard form. So a zero on one side, everybody else on the other side. So I'll bring this 14x cubed over here and put it in descending order, highest degree term going down. So I will obtain 2x to the fifth minus 14x cubed uh, plus 24x equals zero. Just to show you what I did, I did a minus 14x cubed there, and I did a minus 14x cubed there. Okay, then I want to factor. Let's first check for common monomials. Looks like a 2x. So I'll take a 2x out, and let's see who survives. Again, it'll all be equal to zero. Uh, x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12. I got that quadratic form, a degree 4, degree 2 constant. Um, so I'll set up my template. 2x, somebody, somebody equals 0, x squared and x squared, because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Once again, I'm looking for two numbers that have that product and that sum. Positive product, negative sum, must be negative. Negative, I'm thinking negative 4 and negative 3. So minus 4 and minus 3. I'll do a quick OI check. Minus 3x squared, minus 4x squared. Checkers. I don't want to get too clustered here with the writing. Uh, ooh, difference of squares. So 2x, hopefully... You're okay with uh, x minus 2 and x plus 2. x minus 2 and x plus 2. And then you're not a perfect square, so just x squared minus 3 equals 0. All right, then uh, I've got a series of factors. Uh, I can even separate, uh, so I'll box it. I've got a 2, got an x, got that, got that, and I've got that. So what do you want to do is set each factor chunk equal to zero and solve it for x. Well, two will never be zero, so I can kind of disregard that. Uh, ooh, x sub one is zero. I really just have x equal zero. I just set that chunk equal to zero. Okay, so x minus two equals zero, just plus two to each side. So x equals two. We'll call that x sub two x plus 2 equals 0, minus 2 minus 2, x equals negative 2. I'll call that x sub 3. And then over here, x squared minus 3 equals 0. I'll have to do a little bit of work here. So uh, I'm going to isolate the x squared. I'm going to add 3 to each side. Plus 3 plus 3. x squared equals 3. And what I'm does squaring? plus or minus square rooting. So I'll square root this, and I'll plus or minus square root that, and I get x equals plus or minus the square root of three. And again, I'll just write that in two separate ways. So x sub four equals negative rad three, and x sub five equals positive rad three. And then if it were a test, you'd write them all in the answer blank. So I'll go 0, 2, negative 2, 
negative rad 3 and positive rad 3. And once again, this is the whole reason why we factor.